Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today is finally TBR slash wrap up day. So this is going to be my May wrap up and my June TBR. I like to do them together because I don't really see the point of doing them separately because I just don't have I don't really have that, I okay, that's not true. I have a lot to say about books, but I just feel like putting them together just makes it easier for me. Um, I don't know. I really don't know where I was going with that, but that's, that's what you get. Uh, I am a little bit um, food deprived. I have not eaten anything yet today, and I have not had enough coffee or something because my brain is like, what? And I'm just like, yeah, I know, it's pretty bad. I did just make a fresh cup of coffee though. It's hot because it's cold today and I don't like it. It's really, really cold today. It's super windy. Like it's acting like April outside or maybe even March instead of like the 28th of May. So that's pretty cool. Um, anyways, I'm just gonna go ahead and get started. So the books that I read in May were Dune by Frank Herbert, These Violent Delights by Chloe Gong, uh, Time of Dread by John Gwynn, the Hunter and the Mage by Caitlin Davis, and the last book that I read was The Puppy War by R.F. Quine. So, we're just gonna go ahead and dig in. Book number one was Dune, and I absolutely love this book. I did an official book review on my channel, my first one ever, and that was terrifying, and it's out there now, so please don't laugh at me or like say rude things. Um, that was scary, that was like the scariest video I've made so far. <laughs> Um, I really, really love this book. I gave it a really high, I think it was like four and a half out of five stars. It's so, so good. I just really, really liked it. So if you guys want a more in-depth look at that book, you can go watch that um, review. I will put it up in the cards and also put it in the description box. So um, yeah, I just really liked it. My favorite thing about this book was the setting. Um, it's just super unique and really, really cool and I really liked it. So that's all I'm gonna say about Dune because I already talked about it enough in other videos. Next on my list is A Time of Dread by John Gwynn. This was another book that I absolutely loved. Um, I did talk a lot about this one in one of my reading updates and I can't remember which one it was, but let's just say my favorite thing about this book was the world slash the characters. The characters are really good. Um, I also really liked the writing. I just liked everything about this book. This book got a Four, I think it was another four and a half out of five stars for me. It was just super good. I just really, really liked it. Um, what else do I have to say about this book? I don't know. If you want, you can go watch my reading update that I did. I will find out which one it was and I will also link that so you guys can like see more of my thoughts on this book because I did talk about it a lot then and since I have quite a few things to go through, um, in this video, I really don't want to spend a ton of time talking about these books that I've already talked about. So I will remember to link that for you guys and you guys can check out that reading update. Actually, I don't have a physical copy of it. The next book I read, actually I read it before A Time of Dread, but it was um, These Violent Delights by Chloe Gong, which is a YA historical fiction fantasy novel. And that is yet another book that I was very excited to read because I thought it was going to be amazing. And it was okay, but after after I read it, I was just like, the more I thought about it, the more I was like, yeah, I really didn't like that book. I was just getting through it because I think there was like a mystery going on and apparently I really like mysteries, like having things to solve. So um, that was really what was forced, like pushing me through reading it was that. And also um, one of the characters, Roma, was pretty fantastic. And um, it's also a Romeo and Juliet retelling, which I thought was really interesting and, and fun. Um, but other than that, the book really just didn't, I don't know, the main character was stupid, I really didn't like her, and um, there were some gross things that were going on in that book that I was like, mm, I could have really lived without reading that, but that's cool, I'm gonna have that image in my head now for the rest of my life, super great. So that book got a uh, three out of four, five stars, like a low three. Um, I originally had given it four stars, but that was like literally right after I finished reading it, so I was like, mm. A couple of weeks went by and I was like, maybe it doesn't deserve four stars for me. Maybe it's more like a three, like a low three star book. It was not a two star book. It wasn't that bad, but it definitely was not four stars, not even close to four stars. So um, I also talked a bit about that book. I think in my last reading update I did, I'm just going to have to link all of the reading updates because that's apparently when I do all of my talking about books. 
So um, that one was enjoyable, but I had a lot of issues with it, and that's basically all I need to say about that one. The next book is The Hunter and the Mage by Caitlin Davis, and I absolutely enjoyed this one. This is a YA fantasy, and it is self-published, but it's really, really good. It's very well written. Um, there were a couple of things that I didn't like about it. I ended up giving this one a 4 out of 5 stars, which is pretty good. It's a pretty good rating. Um, it just wasn't like amazing. I'm really hoping the next book will be even better. Um, these books just keep getting better um, each time, so that is really cool. Um, this is the second book in the Raven and the Dove series, which I th is a four book series. Um, let's see. Did it end on a cliffhanger? It didn't really end on a cliffhanger. The things that bothered me in this book was the main character. Um, something really traumatic kind of happens to her at the end of the first book, and then the beginning, the like the second book picks up like right after that, and she just like is really weird. It just feels her character feels really out of like I don't know, just not acting from her normal. I guess she does some things and she acts in ways that I'm like. What happened to the girl in the first book who, like, you know, was the rebel? Like, what happened to the to the self-purported rebel that she was in the first book? And it takes her a very long time to finally wake up and be like, Oh, I guess this is kind of bad. Like, maybe I should try fighting back or something. So that irritated me a lot. But there is another character, there's actually several characters in this book that had really, really, really good character development. The main character was not one of them. Um, but they were um, side characters or like secondary characters kind of in the first book and they got more of the spotlight in this one. Not the entire spotlight, um, like some other books that I have read and super disappointing. Those, um, I'll just say what they are because I don't think I've talked about them a lot, but it was the Curse Breakers series by Bridget Kemmerer. Um, I know a lot of people really like those books. Um, I really like the first book and I really didn't like the other two and that's basically because the characters in the first book became suddenly secondary characters and then basically non-existent by the time you got to the end of the... or they were basically non-existent in the second book and then at the end of the third book they were just like who even are these people like without these characters they would not the books wouldn't even be here so anyways that um did not happen in this series um even though those um two characters got more page time in this book the original two main characters from the first book did not get discarded or like ignored the entire time like what happened in the um Chris Breakers books so I appreciated that. I feel like there was a pretty even um, like mix of all four points of view. There are four points of view in this book. And I just really liked it. Um, like I said, the there was a couple, I think three of the characters had some really great character development and they just, by the end of the book, like my, my heart was hurting for them because they went through some pretty rough things and they came out on the other side stronger and I'm just really, I'm really excited for the next book. I can't wait. Um, which the next book comes out in June, so I'm really excited to read that one. So, let's see. And then, gosh, it's so windy outside. The final book that I read in the month of May was The Poppy War by R.F. Quang, and I literally just talked about this book for a good little bit in my reading update. So, um, if you want to see my thoughts on this book, you can go check that out because it's the only book I talk about in the whole video. I ended up giving this one a three, a low three out of five stars because there was just a lot of things in here that I did not like and, um, yeah. There was a lot, there was a lot of stuff happening in this book that I just didn't care for. So if you want to see my thoughts on this book, you can go check out that reading update. I will make sure, like, I'll put it up in the cards so you guys can find it and in the description box. So this is, um, an adult fantasy and I, while I was reading it or afterwards while I was thinking about it, I'm not sure if this is a fantasy trying to be a historical fiction or if it's a historical fiction that's trying to be fantasy. I am not 100% sure, but either way, it didn't, it didn't go well for me. Um, I won't be continuing the series. I just don't have time to read books that I don't like. So that's my thoughts on this one. 
Um, overall, I feel like I had a really good month reading as far as May goes. Um, I got through five books, which is pretty impressive. My like record lately has been all over the place. Um, like, you know, uh, was it April that I only read one book? I can't even remember. It was really horrible though. So I feel like I got through some great books. Um, I am learning some more things about myself as a reader, which is always a good thing. Um, things I can't wait for. Let's see. I can't wait to continue the Dune Saga, um, the uh, Time of Dread, which is part of the Blood and Bone series by John Gwynn. I am excited to be going back into that world hopefully soon. I don't know if I'll get to it in June because I did order the next two books in that series because I was like, oh my gosh, I am going to like completely finish the series and be great. And um, I had I ordered them from the UK and I they're not here yet. So I didn't add the second one to my June TBR, but if it comes, I might just throw it in there just for funsies. Um, but yeah, I don't feel like I did too bad. I got three really high four star books and a couple that were pretty meh, but um, that is to be expected. I can't win every time I pick up a book. So uh, that kind of wraps up my May reading pretty much. Let's go ahead and get into my June TBR. The first book I have on my June TBR is The Girl in the Stars by Mark Lawrence. This is the first book in uh, book, the Book of the Ice series by him. Um, I literally don't know anything about this book. Literally, I know nothing about it. And um, the reason I am, there's actually a couple of reasons why I'm putting it at the top of my TBR for June. And literally, this is the first book I'm going to read is because one, I have had it since last year, so it's one of my 2020 purchases and I need to read it um, before it gets too much further into 2021. And then the other reason is because the sequel just came out a few months ago and I want to get it, but I am kind of holding off in case I don't like this one, because if I don't like this book, I'm not gonna continue the series. I'm not one of those people who like reads a book and just hopes that the second one is better, even if they really didn't like the first one. Like, I don't have time for that. If I didn't like the first book, the, my chances of liking the second book are probably going to be even lower. Now I have experienced like reading a really great book and then the sequel is kind of meh and then the third book was even worse. I have experienced that before, but I'm not the kind of person, like I don't have time. I don't have time or the resources to buy books, like sequels to books that I didn't enjoy in the hopes that it's going to be better than the first one. I just don't have time for that. Um, it's just how I roll, guys. That's, I mean, there's millions of books in the world that I could read, and I'm not gonna spend my time reading ones that, or reading sequels to books that I didn't enjoy, just in the hopes that maybe it might be better than the first one. Like, I'm not gonna take that chance. I don't have time for that. So, um, anyways, back to my June TBR. Wow, I'm full of rants today. So, this is my first June, my first book for June. I think that's all I need to say about it. Other than it's, I'm pretty sure it's an adult fantasy. Um, so let's just chat a moment about um, genres. So why is it that people will read a book and just because the main character is a little bit on the younger side, just automatically think it's YA? I'm still trying to wrap my head around this. Like why, just because the character is under the age of like 21 does not mean it's a YA novel at all whatsoever. Just like YA books can be written about um, adults and it doesn't mean it's an adult novel just because the characters are all older than the age of 21. I just don't understand it. I don't get it. It doesn't make any sense to me. Um, because I've read lots of books that have younger main characters and they're not, they're not YA. They just aren't. I just, that's just not how it works. Um, so I think, I really think this is um, an adult fantasy and I'm just gonna stick to that because I really don't know and it probably wouldn't matter even if it wasn't because something probably happens in it that would make me think oh this is adult fantasy and someone else would read it and they'd be like this is young adult fantasy and I'd be like I don't even know I don't even know anymore what even are genres do they even matter I don't think they matter anymore the second book I have for the month of June is The Summer Garden by Paulina Simons. So um, this is a historical fiction and it is the third book in the Bronze Horseman trilogy. And um, these books are beastie. I know this does not look very big, but it has almost like 740 pages in it. 740, yeah, it has over 740 pages in it. So. It's a big one. Um, all of the other books in this trilogy were also large, but I absolutely freaking love these books. 
Um, I can't even tell you why I like them, but I have sp I have spread out this trilogy so far. So the first book I read in like 2019, and then I'm pretty sure I read the second book last year in 2020, and then I'm gonna be reading this one in 2021. So I have like a year in between each book, and it's because they're freaking dense. Like these are, um, if you if you read historical fiction, and if you've ever read like The Light You Cannot See or All the Light You Cannot See, I can't remember what that's called. Where is it? Oh, it's right here. Okay, so if you've read this book um, and you know how dense and like intense and important and emotional and there's so many things going on in this book, um, this one is a lot like that. This whole trilogy has been like, well, I can't say the whole trilogy because I haven't read this one yet, but the first two books are very much written like this one. Um, they're just super dense. They're super um, heavy with like the, uh, the context and stuff, like, I don't know. It's a writing style that I really, really appreciate. So I am excited and also scared to read this book and to wrap up that trilogy. I know this trilogy is going to be one that I'm going to read, uh, reread in the future. I just don't know when because they are so intense and so heavy. Um, but yes, I'm very excited to read this book. It's probably going to take me about a million years to get through it just because of how dense and thick it is, but it's gonna be great. Um, a fun thing to know about me is that I only really read um, historical fiction in the summer. I don't know why, that's just a thing. So it probably even will drag on into the fall. Um, it just depends. But yeah, that's just, I don't know. That's just how it is for me. Like I read science fiction usually and historical fiction in the summer, which those two genres cannot be further apart <laughs> than they are. Um, maybe it's just because I like to experience, like I like to read a different things. So um, I don't read contemporaries, but historical fiction, uh, science fiction and fantasy are usually withdrawn enough from like the real world that I can get immersed in the book and lose myself in the story. So that's why I read. I don't read to uh, also experience all of the problems in real life that are happening in my reading life. Um, I read purely as escape, as entertainment. I don't read to be cultured or whatever. I read for entertainment. If culturing happens along the way, that's awesome, but I'm not gonna seek out books that people are like, oh, everybody needs to read this because the themes in it are so important. Like, if you're gonna throw that title next to a book, I'm just gonna be like, well, I guess I'm not gonna read that because I know I'm not gonna enjoy it. Um, I hate books with agendas. I just really don't care for them. So if a reader is all, all like, yeah, this book had these thing, these themes in it, and they're so they're so relevant to today, I'm like, yep, putting that one on my don't ever read that book list because I'm literally not gonna enjoy it. Um, now, if I come across a book that has themes in it that are relevant to the times that we're living or are just relevant to humanity in general, that's different. Um, but if a book is being marketed as, and it could be by the publishing company, the author or a fellow reader, I don't care where the marketing comes from, it's all marketing. Um, if they're marketing the book as something that's, you know, super relevant and super whatever, but I don't even know how to explain how I feel about it. But I'm not gonna read that book because I don't read to rehash the things that are happening in real life in a book. I don't want anything to do with it. I just wanna read to escape, to forget about my mundane life for a little bit and get immersed in a story and connect emotionally with characters and journey with them and that's what I want. I don't want to read about things I could get on Facebook and see or things I could get on the news and see even though it's fake. So yeah, that's, that's how I feel about um, that kind of stuff. So that's why I stick with the fantasy and the science fiction and the historical fiction. Um, for the most part. Anyways, I really don't read anything else other than those three genres. So that is, that was a really big rabbit hole on historical fiction, sorry. <sighs> Moving on, my next book, the next book for June is Dune Messiah. That's not focusing. So this is the second book in the Dune saga. And if you can't tell, it's pretty little. It's a little book. Um, I think it's only got like two, 281 pages in it so it's less than 300 pages so it's very small um which kind of shocked me at first because dune is like huge and i was like really this book is so tiny like i'm just gonna fly through this um i really again 
don't know anything about this book um, other than it's the second one in the Dune Chronicles and I really really liked that book so much. Um, so I bought this one and I added it right onto my June TBR and hopefully I will just be able to continue reading this series throughout the rest of the year. I can't remember how many more books. I think there's six books altogether. There might be seven. I can't remember. But my plan from here on out is to read one of these a month. So um, this is... I don't know. I'm just really excited about this one. So the next two books I have on my list are actually audiobooks and um, the reason I have put a couple of audiobooks on my TBR this month is because I've really really been in the mood to play Animal Crossing. So if you didn't know, I do play Animal Crossing. I am not a huge gamer, like I just don't have time. Like my time is I can either read or I could play a game. I cannot do both. Until I discovered that I could also listen to audiobooks while I was playing a game. Like, a game like Animal Crossing where you don't have to, like, focus on a story. There's no way I could listen to an audiobook and play a game like Red Dead Redemption because there's two, there would be two different stories going on at the same time and I'd have to keep constantly pausing my audiobook and getting ripped out of the story in the video game and the audiobook. Like, that would just be a nightmare. But with games like Animal Crossing where there's not really, like, a, there's literally, there's not a story you have to follow. Um, you're just interacting with the island that you're on. Um, I really don't need to worry too much about um, listening to a book at the same time. So the first audiobook I have is, okay, I know this is not an audiobook, but I have a physical copy, so I figured I'd just put up here The Two Towers. And this was actually on my May TBR, and I didn't end up getting to it, which was fine. Um, so I'm going to listen to The Two Towers audiobook while I play Animal Crossing. And then the other one I have is Night of the Dragon by Julie Kagawa. So that would be the third book in the Shadow of the Fox series. Um, and I, have, I only have that one on audiobook and I plan to listen to that one as well while I play Animal Crossing. Um, that one is an, it was one of the last books that I have from my 2020 books that I purchased. So um, I just need, I need to listen to it because I want to finish out the series and have that one all completed and then I kind of want to know what the heck happens, um, you know, after what happened in the second book, The Soul of the Sword. So uh, those are my reading plans for the month of June. I really don't have anything else going on other than I, yeah, I might add in the second book in the Blood and Bone series by John Gwynn, but I'm not sure. Um, right now I have like five or six books on my TBR, which is quite a lot. Um, I may or may not get through all of them. So anyways. My battery is dying on my camera, which happens an awful lot. So I'm going to let you guys go. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today. If you have read or want to read any of the books that I talked about, please leave that in the comments. I would love to chat with you guys more about books. And I hope that I will see you in another one. Until then, I hope you guys have a wonderful week, a wonderful month. Whatever it is that you're doing, I hope you're having a wonderful time. And I will see you in another video. Bye!